Good morning. Today I'm going to talk about the sun and just some basic features. So you might know some of this stuff already. Some of it might be new. Well, let's take a look. So this first image is giving you a size, an idea of how big the sun is compared to the rest of the planets. And we can see there's a pretty big difference between the two, or between the sun and then all of these planets here. The sun is by far, by far the largest feature in our solar system. It's the center of our solar system um, and makes up almost all of the material of the solar system. So what that means is um, it has most of the mass. And if we compare that to Earth, which is a, you know, a small planet compared to something like Jupiter or Saturn, um, but if we look at Earth's volume and the Sun's volume, we see that we could fit 1.3 million Earths inside of the Sun. So a, a tremendous amount. And then down here, what we look at is, this is not actually the sun, this is a pie graph, or pie chart, showing the mass of the solar system. And it only has three things. It has the sun, Jupiter, and Saturn. Everything else would be minuscule. And what we see is that the sun is making up close to 99% of all of the mass in the whole solar system. So you could put everything else together. And I think it only comes out to like 3% of the solar system's mass where the sun is somewhere around 97% um, of all the mass in the solar system. And they've got Jupiter and Saturn there being the biggest planets, just to give you an idea. It's two tiny slivers of this pie chart. All right, let's go a little bit further and we're gonna see some parts of the sun. There's lots of different areas. We're not going into all of these parts or anything right now. Remember, this is just the basics. But if we're talking about um, elements and chemistry, the sun is mainly hydrogen. So that is the most basic element. It's the first on the periodic table. And it's about 73% hydrogen. Now what's going on in the sun, what's giving it that heat and that power and that energy is nuclear fusion. And in nuclear fusion, we fuse together so, right, stick together, force, to force these things together. We're going to fuse hydrogen, and they will make larger atoms, like helium. Uh, you can get several different reactions during nuclear fusion, but the idea is that you're taking these small elements, like hydrogen, fusing them together, and in the process, a little bit of energy is released. Now, that little bit of energy you can think of as photon, a photon, a, a particle of light, and that's going to happen in the core here, right? But now, a photon's created. How long does it take to get to the surface of the sun? Well, we know that light travels very fast, but the sun, the inside of the sun is very dense, very dense. So that photon is gonna bounce around as it hits things. So if you have a photon created in the center, in the core, it can take photons anywhere from thousands of years to millions of years before it bounces up to the surface of the sun and then leaves the sun as, you know, what you would consider sunlight, right? That's, the, the, that's a photon. Those are a whole bunch of photons coming at us from the sun. 
So it can be millions of years for that one photon to actually escape the sun. And again, that has to do with how dense the sun is. It's packed with material. All right, a couple more things here. We've got a picture of the sun. This is called the photosphere. That's kind of like, you can think of the photosphere as the surface of the sun. Remember, it doesn't have a hard surface. It's not like Earth with a rocky crust. Um, but we can characterize a certain area as the surface. And on the surface of the sun, we can occasionally see these dark spots. And they appear on the sun's photosphere. They're dark because they're a little bit cooler in temperature than the surrounding material. So the surrounding material might be 5,000, 6,000 degrees where these areas, the cooler areas, the dark spots, are maybe 3,000 degrees. Um, so they're a, uh, a bit cooler and end up as these dark spots because of how we image the sun. Now, what is causing those? Again, this is just brief, but this shows two sunspots here, and then it shows this band going from one to the other, connecting one to the other. And what you're seeing there are magnetic field lines, or a, a magnetic field. Oops. And these sunspots, um, These sunspots can be very large in size, so they can be larger than the whole Earth. Um, or they can be small, too, uh, you know, a few kilometers, 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers. But they're created because of those magnetic field lines. Those magnetic field lines pass through that area, and because of interactions, they actually bring down the heat the temperature of those areas. But that's what's literally creating them. It's the interaction of this magnetic field with the sun's surface that causes it. And this can happen um, anywhere on the surface of the photosphere. Okay, I hope this was a good intro. Thanks.